Okay, have you ever submitted a paper and uh, had a, a hypothesis test somewhere in the paper and a reviewer or the editor says, uh, well, did you do a power analysis for, for that particular test? Well, what's that all about? Well, <clears throat> first, what's a power analysis? Okay, remember, the, the significance level of a test deals with the null hypothesis. And the significance level gives you the, the, the risk you're willing to take that you will mistakenly reject the null hypothesis when it, there really isn't much difference between the two treatment groups. The power deals with the alternative hypothesis, and it's the reverse situation. Suppose the alternative hypothesis is true, then what's the probability you will correctly reject the null hypothesis when in fact it really is not true, the null hypothesis is not true, and the alternative hypothesis is true. That's fine. Let's presume you're doing the correct statistical test and everything like that. There's basically four concepts that are closely related to power. Number one is the significance level. We've already talked about that, and you're going to have to use 0.05 for your significance level. So that's out of the question, so to speak. The next thing is the sample size. Remember, we've said the larger the sample size, the more precisely you are measuring the estimates in each of your, let's say, two groups. And so if you can measure things more precisely, you're more likely to be able to say, hey, in the target population, these things are different. Now the third thing is the magnitude of the difference that you're interested in detecting. If you want your hypothesis test to be able to detect a very, very small difference, you're going to need a very, very large sample size. If you want to detect a very large difference, you won't need your sample size to be so large. So larger sample size, more power. The larger the difference you're trying to detect, more, more power. Now I've, I've said difference, it's technically called the effect size, and it's the difference relative to the variability of the data. But that's always true in statistics. And so then the power is the, is the fourth, fourth thing. So when do you do a power analysis? Well, usually in the past, it was mostly done for the following situation. A, a uh, physician would come to me and say, could you tell me what sample size I need so I will have a reasonable power in the study I'm going to do? They're coming before they've done the study. Why? You'd like to know if it makes sense to do this study with the sample size you're going to have. To, 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 uh, because if you're not going to have a lot of power, then you're really not going to learn very much from your study. And you'll have spent all that time, and you, you'll be right in the same, basically the same place where you were when you started with. Okay. The, other, the other reason is from the IRB, or the point of view, is if you're going to do a study and you're going to have to get consent from the patients, or you're going to dig in through patient charts, you know, you're going to be, in a sense, inconveniencing the patients to some extent. You should not do that unless your study has a certain uh, likelihood of giving you some more information than you already, you already have. So, that's basically how think people used to come to me and ask for power analysis. But I would always turn the question around, and I would say, you tell me what your sample size is. Well, how do they know their sample size? How many years are you going to do the study? One, two, three, okay. How many patients do you see at this institution each year? Multiply that number times the number of years subtract out a certain proportion that you know are not going to participate in your study, there's your sample size. You give me your sample size and I'll give you the power. Play. Okay, here we are with our example that we've already been talking about and let's bring in the notion of power. Now the notion of post hoc power especially. So here's our hypothesis test we did and it did not pass uh, the significance test at the 5% level. So, but let's, let's look at the power. Now, what is the power? The power comes, turns out to be 43%. Oh, okay, so you're saying, well, I told you because the, the, the p-value is greater than 0.05, I knew you wouldn't have very much power. Well, remember, the paper told us that. We knew it would be around 50% or less. You know that already. So it's 43%, and you say, well, but let me ask you, what, what more information does that give you? Well, your test had low power. Well, that's fine, it had low power, but this is what you've learned from the test, from the uh, study. This is what you learned. The fact that it had low power, okay, it had low power, as we talked about before. Well, what about up here? 
Oh, the p-value is 0 0.015. Well, then what do you think the power is up here? Well, it must be extremely large because it's got a very small p-value. Well, it turns out the power here is only 68%. Now, I'll bet you we're thinking it would be 85, 90%. It's only 68%. Now, what does the power add to what you already knew? I say it doesn't add very much at all.